Hey everybody. I shot a video recently where I did an ammonia test in the video. And while the video was not about how to use the ammonia test kit, uh, I did demonstrate on video how I used the test kit. And I was told that I was doing it wrong and that because I wasn't uh, following the test according to the instructions on the bottle, I was not going to get a proper result. So I don't know if that's true or not. I've messed around with the nitrate test. I've tried different variations on how to do the test to see if we could skew the results or get an improper color or something like that. But I've never, to my memory anyway, messed around with the ammonia kit and found out whether or not there's anything you can do that will give you a bad or inaccurate result. So today we're going to go over to my work area and we're going to try a couple different variations on how to do the test and see if that doesn't actually impact the final result. So so let's go down over there and get right to it. All right, here's the experiment we're going to do. We are going to take some water. I know this looks like it's a little bit blue already. Uh, that is from medication staining the cup. That is fresh water right out of my tap. No ammonia. We're going to put a little squirt of Windex in there. That will give us a little bit of ammonia, but not a whole lot. I'm not sure uh, what that's going to come out to be, but that's part of the point here. What we're going to do is we're going to set the tests up three different ways and we're going to see if the colors come out the same way every time. So the first vial we are going to do exactly the way the instructions say. And that is we're going to put eight drops of bottle number one. Don't know if I'm casting shadows over that or not. I'm trying to get this all on camera so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to shake the first reagent. Mix that in. I don't believe the instructions say to do that, but I did have somebody tell me the other day that I needed to shake the first reagent before putting the second one in. I know that applies, or theoretically applies, to the nitrate test. We're going to put in eight drops of the second reagent. And then we're going to mix that all around. So that'll be our control test. Now we're going to do a test the way I normally do it, which is by putting the first set of drops in and then simply adding the second set of drops without shaking in between. Uh, that is where I was told I was going wrong. I wasn't going to get an accurate result if I didn't shake that first reagent and mix it in thoroughly before adding the second reagent. And I don't think that's going to make any difference whatsoever. So let's try putting eight drops of the first reagent in. The first reagent's thick, and you got to squeeze the bottle pretty hard. So be careful when you pick up the second reagent. This is very runny and comes out quickly, so don't squeeze very much at all when you get to the second one, or you'll squirt it out. So there's eight of one, eight of two, all at the same time. And now I don't actually bother shaking it. I just rock it back and forth 10 times, 15 times, make sure that's all mixed up. I find that when I shake these little bottles, they tend to leak and you get a little splatter coming out from around the lid. If you just rock them back and forth like this, you still get a good thorough mixing. When you turn it upside down, wait for all the liquid to run this way, then turn it upside down, all the liquid to run that way. And you do that, again, 10, 15 times, and you should be good. Now, the third test we're going to do, we're going to do flat out wrong, and we're going to see if we don't get different results. So what we're going to do with this test is we're going to actually add the reagents backwards and not shake it up. So I'm going to do similar to what I did on my, my test where I didn't shake between the two reagents. So this time, we're going to put reagent number two in first. Then without shaking it, we're going to put reagent number one in. And now, 
we're just going to rock it back and forth rather than shaking it vigorously. And we're already getting a clear color change on the first vial. So it'll take a little while for the second two to catch up. So we'll give that a few minutes, we'll come back, and we'll see if we've got different colors in all three of those vials. My prediction is that they will all be all pretty much indistinguishable from one another. So there you go, give me five minutes, I'll be right back, and we'll see what the results look like. All right, it's been five minutes but since that last one was done, and they've all had time to blossom into color. And I don't know about you, but I cannot tell the difference from one to the other. I've even held them up to the light against that white card, and they are indistinguishable as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you put some kind of scientific spectrometer on there or something and got the exact wavelengths of light, would they be identical? I don't know. Do I care? No. Look at them. Do you see any difference from the practical point of view in the amount of ammonia that I, any of them is registering? So there you go. You know, they've got to put the instructions on the bottle on how to do it in some fashion. They can't just say mix it up any old way. I would be willing to bet if you did one drop of bottle number one and then one drop of bottle number two and then a second drop of bottle number one and a second drop of bottle number two, any combination of mixing those two reagents in there in equal parts will give you your reaction and I would also imagine that if you did four drops of one and four drops of two you'd probably still get the same color from one vial to the next but it would just be a low it wouldn't match your color scale so that's why you do the eight drops that's what it's measured out to be and you get the accurate result but as long as you get both parts in there in equal measure and get them evenly and thoroughly mixed up and then let it stand for five minutes you're going to get an accurate result or as accurate as this test can be so there you go everybody that was today's little experiment thanks for watching make sure you subscribe you never know what you're going to get from me hope you enjoyed this one and i'll see you real soon in the next one